All right, so this is the this is the video where I try to 3D print something that wasn't meant to be 3D printed. Actually, I, I still don't know if it was or was not meant to be 3D printed at this point. I haven't I haven't got it working. I just got it out of the mold. Uh, so far, the the failures have racked up. Now, um, basically, all this beginning footage is. Um, more or less stock filler uh, that that is just here to kind of give you some context. Oh fuck! I have the shaker shaking before you know what the shaker is. Actually, no, no, it's supposed to be there at that time. Okay, never mind. That's not good. Don't just forget about it. Um, the, some important things about this video are uh, that I was trying to make a foundry with three D printing. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't know anyone that's wasted their time to do this. Uh. Mostly just because you can just go buy a bucket. Uh, but uh, when you don't have a bucket and you have like a, a trillion kilos of filament, you can always just do that too. So that's basically what this is. Plus, I, I needed a foundry and I didn't have the money for a foundry. So I decided to bootstrap a foundry with filament and it's like I basically just spent a day to designing something and another day printing something so that I could save some amount of money that I wasn't 100% sure on that would have been probably 20% of the total cost of materials. So I, I guess two days of my life is worth 20% of $60, We'll we'll see how the thing goes when it's done. I'm I still have to. There's still things that are reasons that the thing isn't done yet. So yeah, that that's where I'm at. Uh, there's the the biggest things in the video that are kind of interesting is the the castings out of plaster of Paris. I also need to the forge to burn the PLA out of those casts. Or sorry, fuck. Those aren't casts. Those are well. Those are molds. Yeah, those are molds made with three D prints that will be the mold for the cast. But basically, that that's some interesting section. That's that's that it, I figured needed to be included if I was gonna do this. The next, the the most interesting parts of this will be uh, actually seeing the thing crumble into a bunch of small pieces, and getting to uh, the point where I buy a $40 bucket, like King of Random suggested. But regardless, everything in between then and and now is basically just uh, uh, attempts and, uh, you know, what could, could possibly be considered educational, I suppose, uh, depending on your viewpoints on uh, existential failure. But... Uh, yeah, there's there's lots to be learned here. There's lots of value. Um, there's so many things that I, I did for this little details, and, and they still really don't rack up to the total number of little details that you need to include in these sorts of projects. Like, as soon as your project isn't making an LED blink on Arduino... Basically, to do it right, you either have to fucking build it 9 billion quadrillion times and actually figure out what the problem was every single time. Or you can do about 9 quadrillion billion billion hours of research and preemptively figure out where you're going to have all these problems. I kind of chose an in-between for this state. I probably spent about 2 to 3 hours of research and i spent quite a bit of time as a child melting lead on uh because uh, you know what other things do you have to do as a child so i came into this with a little bit of experience uh and knowledge of you know molten metals and and, and hot things my research was mild um I, I didn't get too fine into the details uh, I included. I was also doing some a, a certain level of innovation here because I'm 3D printing the molds. Not that that's... I mean, it's not new to 3D print molds, but I guess it's new to 3D print the foundry for your molds. 
or your molds for your foundry, which I, I guess like who the fuck would bother doing that for a number of reasons. But, you know, I always kind of like the idea of open foundry because it's not like there's enough open source projects out there to begin with. So, yeah, this kind of part, I just ended up mixing a very large random amount of all of these substances that I was told were probably important. I was also told that, that these types of uh, plaster of Paris mach sodium things were not at all perfect for this, and you should stop wasting your time like a fucktard. But, you know, I didn't want to have to restart my research. So basically, I just went out, bought a 22 kilogram bag of something that was supposed to be like plaster of Paris, ended up being quick set, and was bubbly as fuck. So. I still have yet to prove these people wrong. I'm hopeful. Um, they they really like their uh, fucking arrogant. No, okay. They they're prob they could they're probably a little bit arrogant, but they're not completely arrogant. They're a little bit, a little bit precocious, a little bit, a little bit condescending on their uh, you know elite little forums there. But I, you know, I just I fuck. I hate it. I hate it when those those old guys are like, oh, that's not gonna work, son. You don't use plaster of Paris. You only use the finest of building concrete. That's how I melt my knives and my steel. And I'm like, fuck you. I'm making. I'm aluminum. I, I melt aluminum, motherfucker. I don't melt. I don't melt no goddamn knives. And they're like, oh, I don't give a fuck. That shit's gonna break up real quick. How fuck you gonna heat up steel 1200C if you, if you ain't using. You know, use real concrete straight out of Mississippi, motherfucker. There ain't no Paris French to do out of her. And so at this point, I realized that I probably had fucked up. Generally, old people have knowledge. That's kind of a theme in life. But I figured I'd, I'd, I'd fuck with it anyway. So now I'm at the point where I've realized one mistake. You, I am probably not going to be able to release that with that much surface area. So, what I'm talking about now is an abstract, I'm actually talking about the video. So, what you can see is me dremeling the fucking casing off of this and destroying half a fucking roll of filament and about 21 hours of print time. So, no, it was one day, it was a full day. Yeah, so that's about one day of print time, half a thing of filament, and if this doesn't work, I just might burn the rest of the roll, because why not? I actually could probably burn it in the thing. That'd be great. So yeah, that that's 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 kind of where I'm at. I, I really hope this works at this point. I'm I, I I going into CAD and redesigning things is just always such a pain in the ass. But yeah, I can honestly it came out pretty well for for first try and for how cheaply I guess I did it. Um honestly if <laughs> if I'd spent a little bit more time on the model, I probably could have something that is, you know, worthwhile and not just, you know, someone going up to you and why the fuck didn't you just go down to the hardware store and buy a bucket, you goddamn retard, and you answer, I have and a tree. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, I have now finished, um project more or less and basically um it ended up working out better than i anticipated it was going to and um yeah i'm just kind of glossing over some of the small photos that i found interesting when uh looking at stuff surrounding the video this uh, little intermediate bit is just how I dried it. I used an incubator from my lab to, I put it in there for probably two weeks. I'm just showing all the moisture that came out of the, out of the actual mold itself. It was a lot. And it got significantly lighter. That's, uh, these are some of my favorite photos that I could find on the topic. I don't know what the fuck Diwali is. Um, I, I, I don't at all. I know is it has to do with Indians and blowing up propane tanks. So that's concerning. But, um, yeah. So this is uh, I took two work on a and ended up being able to use an old transfer case from a BMW right there that was supposed to be scrapped and I just took it and I uh, used it for the aluminum. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, so you can see I started breaking it off by just dropping it a few times pretty heavily to get a little crack there. And then once it, uh, once the, the structure was just broken, I, uh, I could just hit it with a hammer and get all the freaking different little pieces out. Right there, just shattered. And then this is just cleaning it with the uh, brake clean and making sure that I get a significant amount of cancer on my hands because you can't never really have enough cancer on your fingers. This is a little thing I made up on the spot to uh, get the stuff in and out of the foundry because I didn't really have a plan for that and I didn't have a lifter. Uh, it looked pretty cool and the thing gets pretty glowing red hot inside which is good. It, didn't, it got really hot on the outside as well. I used a toaster to dry everything before. Um, this is it on the way while it was heating up and I got up to 430. I did end up getting readings about 600 so it could do aluminum. That's all the steam from the the molds from the PLA boiling out and then I just put the mold the one that I already cleared in back into the oven just to keep it hot and then this is me uh, learning how to use an acetylene torch um, I was running out of oxygen at this point so the flame was uh, not getting as hot or as uh, it wasn't burning properly basically and this is the first time I even tried melting the aluminum so it really, I, I didn't know exactly how long to get it. I just saw it melt real quick and was like, ooh, let's put it, uh, let's touch it. But uh, yeah, so I got a little bit hotter here and then did it for a little bit longer. But still did not have enough oxygen in this and did not blast it for long enough. But I found a little pokey thing so I could poke it while I was burning it. So that was fun. Um, I tried to put it in here in a second. I kind of drew this out a little bit, but playing with the torch is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, using those big vice plier, or the pipe pliers was really stressful because I didn't want to crack anything and you feel like you have so much leverage. Yeah, fuck, see, the aluminum just completely was not hot enough and I just coated the whole thing in carbon, which actually ended up flying off later. But, um, yeah, so I put everything back. I think I reloaded here. Oh, yeah, and then that's, uh, that's learning how to, uh, use the acetylene torch. I know, I just, for some reason I just couldn't, it was just like... Turning the oxygen on slowly, just you know, didn't I just wasn't clicking. It was just like turn on as fast as you possibly can, because you, know, you know, why would you, well, why would you do it slowly? You fucking why? And then this is just continually uh, heating it up, and then yeah, it ended up being pretty good. I got some good, um, like it, it ended up working pretty well. I'm glad I used the acetylene torch. It was much faster. It's probably like two or three minutes. Oh fuck. Yeah, that's just me learning how to use it still. And then, so I basically, I did this a few times. I'm not, I think I just didn't get the mold hot enough in, in these parts because these ones didn't work. Um, I, I tried shaking it, tried shaking all of them. It actually just gives it a really shit surface finish when you shake it like that. But yeah, so it, it didn't go all the way down. I definitely think I blasted the mold. That's one thing I did at the end that actually ended up seeming to help quite a bit. But this is a cool little trophy I could keep. Uh, this was second attempt afterwards, and um, yeah, I was kind of getting better at the torch here, and then I figured now that there's not as much carbon being spit off by it, I could blast it straight in there and just add a little bit of aluminum, and uh, yeah, so I figured, you know, get the hotter the better, it gives you more time and lets it flow down to the bottom. So I was trying to heat the aluminum to compensate for the mold being cold, and when I could have just heated the mold at this point, but I didn't exactly know what the, that was like. It. Uh, I also was uh, kind of doing it backwards. The whole A before O thing was just not clicking. So I was every fuck every time I turn off, just pop, 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 pop. Um, yeah, taking the side off. Spoon worked really well. Um, yeah, I took this one out. I took both things out and uh, just reheated them after I cleaned them both up. And that seemed to help. This one looked like it was actually going to work. This one was probably going to work um, really well. Uh, based on just how like what it looked like in the end because it kind of created like tin foil around all the edges but I just fucking had to tap it with my spoon just a little bit harder and the aluminum poured into the bottom there just like that and I kind of wanted to die yeah so there you can see it was probably gonna work it kind of pulled out from the middle where all but the outside the road dried so you could see where it filled up and it would have worked it would have been nice but it didn't so this was round three this was like a leftover mold that I was not actually planning on using but I figured I said fuck it uh, why not I'm already here I got everything set up so let's go and you know a little more experience can never hurt oh yeah I started blowing up the garage floor because uh, you know I just was blasting it 
Um, yeah, just pull out the slag. I think I do another little reheat session after that. Um, oh, no, I don't. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. Yep. And then, so that was pretty hot. Um, this one, I'm trying to remember this one. This one turned out slightly better, not usable, but there were still some like, huge chunks missing. But this one was certainly closer and was certainly an improvement on the last ones. Uh, yeah. It was really fun. This one, I actually thought I had it. Like, I was super hopeful when I was watching it crumble like that. It just looked so cool. And I was like, oh my god, I finally had it. I was like, thank god. And then no, I just I picked it up for another. It just wasn't right, which, which fucking sucked. But, you know, um, not too, too bad. But it was a good experience and set me up proper for the next time. You can see uh, the, some of the cracks on the top from the heat. There's one big crack on the side. I'm, I'm really happy it held up, though. Like, it wasn't totally crumbling. Um, it certainly wasn't the best at holding in the heat, but it was holding together pretty well. Uh, so this is next weekend, the weekend after, and uh, I went back and to do another round. I'm drying the aluminum on the top. I got more aluminum. I had to remake the molds, and I just used water bottles because I made the, the spouts. I made taller spouts so I could have a little more pressure from the aluminum because I thought that might be a problem. And uh, that seemed to work. I didn't record a lot of this just because it's like I just glossed over it, but I did do a lot more heating in general, and it ended up working out. So this is the this was the final product, and you can actually see what like the the intention was with the the molds, and it came out pretty well. Um, I shook it a lot to make sure it filled in all the gaps, and that's why the surface finish is so so shit. But um, you know, I'm quite happy. There's a lot of bubbles. I definitely should have degassed it, and I'll definitely do that next time. Um, yeah, if you, it, uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but it, it worked pretty well. Uh, next part was just cutting off. I was gonna do it in the lathe, but I didn't want to fucking hurt any of the pieces because it seemed relatively fragile, and I could just cut it off. So I was like, why not? Um, yeah, cleaning it up wasn't too bad. I just ended up uh, sanding it with a Dremel. Um, yeah, I was quite surprised. So it was it was very brittle. I managed to be able to like snap off all the pieces of these pliers, um, which was actually it was nice. It was a lot easier than, than cutting it. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's just the Dremel. And then just give a little sanding, clean her up, give it a little little slicey slew. Um, I just put on my glasses because you know what else. And then yeah, so the pliers really made it a lot easier to clean it up. And I was quite happy with it at this point. I'm, I was hoping that I would get like maybe two or three casts all good enough that they were usable so that I could maybe have two or three of them just to mess around with. But uh, unfortunately, I only got the one and it's a lot of effort to go make extras when I actually don't need them. Uh, I also was really worried about the tolerances because I've never worked with metal before and I didn't know the shrinking. I think I did factor in the, I googled the shrink factor for the PLA or for the, yeah, for all the different parts of it with the casting and everything and I, I got super lucky and it just I like managed to get the tolerance perfect and I could just like tightly fit it right on there. So that was one, I think it's like 5% for aluminum you get shrink so I, I made it bigger. And uh, it was really good because I, I kind of, because I was doing this over such a long period of time, I forgot whether I'd added a, what I'd done for the tolerances, and I, and I did, I did good. Uh, so I threaded the hole for the uh, little lock nut, lock. I can't remember what the key, key lock. This is putting it on. Uh, this yeah, so this is for the long way. This is what the sprocket was actually for because I was using plastic ones and I couldn't find one to order those at a decent price. Or that was gonna come within like three months, so I just figured. Um, yeah, it ended up working out pretty well. Uh, I have ridden it. I don't have any footage of that, but I have ridden it, and there's no problems. I've kind of just moved the issue down the line uh, to the next thing. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It was uh, not bad.